we are finally ready to cover the exercise of homework 7. What you will see is we have six exercises, and the sixth one I broke it down into three parts, actually four parts. So let's start with exercise one. Exercise one, we just want to show that um, this is the language that accepts all inputs. We're going to say that that language is decidable. And you should prove this very similarly to how we prove that the language void is decidable. So remember that we proved, like, we proved this. The language is decidable. Your proof should be very similar to what is here, what is proven here. So that covers the first exercise. Second exercise, we want to show that the program that just loops for all inputs recognizes the language void. So you have the example of reject recognizing the language void. Now you need to do the same, but for loop. Third exercise is to show something that is interesting, which is to say that um, cock functions, see here, so f is a, something that takes an input and returns a boolean. As you know, in cock, functions do not loop, right? You have to be able to, uh, the proof assistant has to be able to know for all inputs that your function, your definitions terminate. So they cannot loop forever. You cannot write a program that simply loops in, in, in cock, which means that we should be able to use such functions, which do not loop, and use them in the context of the citability. So I want to show that every function in cock is admits or, or can be used to uh, build a language that is decidable, right? Where the language is, you call f with i and that returns true. So this is pretty a pretty cool exercise and you should be using p, rec, p decidability. So let's go back to the final slide. P decidability. You want to use the constructor P decidable and look as an example to the first exercise. Okay. So next, what we want to do is we want to prove that for any program P, if I sequence a loop with P, then the whole thing should loop. And for this, you should go through, let me show you the constructor rules. Right? So, in particular, you want to look at the rules for, for looping. Uh, next, what you want to do is you want to prove that if you take any program and you sequence it with something that loops, then the whole thing has to loop, regardless of what your first program is doing. Right? Because either the first thing loops and then everything loops, or the second thing, the first thing does not halt, but the second thing should loop. I also give you a bit of the proof, and I suggest that you do a search for sequence to know what to use. There's only four options, so it's not that hard. Okay, so that last, last exercise is, is actually to prove exercise six. And what exercise six says is, if you have a language that is decidable, its complement is decidable. If you don't remember what complement is, I recommend, I did a video explaining what it is, uh, and you can always print the um, definition. So basically the complement is accepting everything that the, you, the language L rejects. Right? So it's the negation of your language. So we want to be able to prove that given a language, if that language is decidable, its complement should also be decidable. So you need to figure out what is the program. Well, you don't because I give you the program in the previous thing, right? So you don't have to do it all from scratch, right? That would be perhaps a bit too mean. So indeed, I already give you all the parts. So you should be able, you should use in exercise six, the three parts that are proved here before. You don't need to use them. You can use them directly even without proving them. That's what I meant to say. That's what I meant to say. So, so then let's go through each part of this proof. The first thing you need to do is you need to show that the program, which I give you, recognizes the complement. And then you need to show that the program is a decider. And finally, you need to show that the program decides, right? So you know that if something recognized and is a decider, 
then it should be able to decide. So this is three points. Um, and the interesting case, the difficult case, I guess, is this exercise, right? Where you just need to be able to prove that um, something is P recognizes and use this example, go through, try to digest. It's very important that you understand it to be able to know how to prove that a language recognizes. So you really want to look at you really want to look at this part of the proof, which is where we do the recognizability proof. Here until here is how we prove it. This example is more complicated than what you have to prove, but it does follow the same structure. Right? So you will have to manipulate a run in the assumption, and then you need to construct a run in the goal. Right, and finally, exercise six, which is just using the three exercises before. You've already seen exercises like this, so you shouldn't be too surprised about that. And that is the final exercise. I hope you have fun. I hope you enjoy homework seven. And looking forward to see, uh, to hearing from you. And I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.